This is Jason Anderson, Chairman of the Killarney Town Council, and we are calling this special Town Council meeting to order for budget deliberations fiscal year 2024 to 2025. For roll call purposes, all council members are in attendance except for Mr. Grandelski and Mr. Gambatista. Uh, no. Nope. Mr. Gambatista is actually joining us remotely. Ed is also here as well. Ah, there, okay. Mr. Grandelski is here. So all members are present. At this time, we'll open up to public comment on the proposed fiscal year 2024 to 2025 budget. With this being a special town council meeting, we just ask all comments be pertinent to tonight's item, uh, items on the agenda, which is budget deliberations. Step up to the podium, state your name and address. Uh, Ms. Clory, did we have anything submitted? Um, we did receive uh, through the library uh, 11 public comments uh, in support of maintaining the library budget without any further cuts. Um, I apologize, our copy machine has decided to jam up completely. Um, so I don't have the ability to, uh, to uh, pass them around the room. They will be uploaded tomorrow, but I can pass this around so you can read that. But there's 11 public comments uh, supporting the library. Thank you. At this time, we'll open up the microphone. Anyone who would like to make public comment, Please step up to the mic, state your name and address. And uh, just for clarification purposes, there is an aggregate of 45 minutes mm -hmm. and each citizen's presentation shall not exceed five minutes. Hi, my name's Lorraine Lagarde. I'm from South Killingly. And there's so much anxiety in this world. No wonder we have so many problems with mental issues. A help for that is recreation, that at that time when there is nothing to worry, when there's so much to worry about, in recreation, you're, it takes care of your mind, your body, it's, it's healthy for you, and we don't have a lot to be healthy about. Um, the other thing I would say, um, they're, they, they, they're doing when they're doing something normal, they feel well. They feel good about it. Um, the other thing, uh, reading is, an es uh, to me, is an escape from worry, an adventure for your mind. Um, we want to look forward to having healthy minds and bodies in the future. And cutting out both of these will not do that. I ask to I ask you to help to continue the work that has been done to help all. It's our duty to bring as much normalcy as possible. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Pat Orca and I live at 60 Jacques Road in Denison. I'm here to speak against cuts for Killingly Parks, which I'm a big fan of, and the Public Library. Uh, both of the programs, as you will know or you should know, have expanded over the years. Every program gets bigger um, and gets more popular, and park season is just starting, and we certainly know what that is like. Um, there's got to be a better way for us to visit the budget without waiting till the last minute and using words like layoff slash cuts. Um, we all know that we're in um, reevaluation, so taxes never go down. So I would um, hope that at the very least that you um, level fund the budget this year, the same as last year. Um, but of course, I would like to see an increase. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Holly Blade. I live at 14 Mayhew Drive in Dayville. Um, for transparency's sake, I also sit on the Parks and Rec Board. Um, and I've been running the Little Theater on Broad Street for the last seven years. Um, I wanted to take a moment to share my thoughts on the proposed cuts. The budget cuts as proposed by the council are far too broad and will have long lasting negative impacts on our residents and the stability of our town and services. While I fully understand that people are struggling to make ends meet, I don't think cutting services and positions that are already actively providing our community with so much is the answer. Making a large cut from parks and recreation directly affects any family in this town who child, whose child goes to Owen Bell Park, 
whose grandparents take part in any extensive, any of our extensive senior programming, and the hundreds of children and adults who come through our theater program each year. Selfishly, the cuts would greatly impact my ability to provide free theater for this community and for the hundreds of kids who we service through our theater program. Um, in addition to the fact that our program has generated approximately $86,250 since 2020, and that includes one full season off for the pandemic. Um, so that was direct revenue to the town's bottom line. In 2023, there was an extensive push from the National Governance Association to focus on funding youth programming and providing no to low cost opportunities for today's youth. Business leaders, economists, property development, tourism officials, and community planners have all joined with parents, educators, and civic leaders to promote public policies that strengthen the community programming. They do so because they recognize the benefits that accrue to communities when local government helps to foster a robust community that supports opportunities for children, adults, and seniors to have access to life improving programs and services. Providing the community with access to programs such as youth hoop, summer camp, open gym, parks and green space is not just a nice thing that we can offer to our community. It's something that we have to provide. It's not something that we should offer if we can afford it. It's something that we have to offer our community. Providing seniors access to a safe space where they can meet up with other people oftentimes is their only social interaction through the week. It's their only time to speak to other seniors throughout the week. It can be a very isolating and lonely time as our community gets older. And we provide programs to help with their emotional wellness as well as their mental health. I know that trying to find a balance can be a difficult job. Cutting existing positions and existing program is the wrong way to find that balance. These are real people and real lives that are impacted in a negative way. What we need is a budget that reflects our shared priorities, that keeps our town safe, clean, and with services and programming for kids, adults, and seniors, so we can provide a welcoming place to live, work, and raise our families. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Faye Barrio. I live on Junior Ave in Danielson, Connecticut. Um, I really can't top whatever the, everybody else has said about the Park and Rec, about the library. I am on the board of the Park and Rec, and there's two things that I think we need to conserve is that our, our children for our future and our seniors because they deserve it. I know last year I stood up here and I said the same thing. You know, we need to make sure that the children are safe, our children have something to do, our seniors have something to do so we can build a better community and go forward. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, my name is Kim Prescott, and I live on Lump Street, and I'm afraid I've been here before. I've seen where uh, people have wanted to cut the budget of the library. Last time, I think it was 44%. I assume it's not as bad this time. Libraries seem particularly easy to target. And I think it's a surprising considering how many people go to the library. I know the statistics on how many people show up to the library. What the statistics don't show is the broad range of people who go to the library, from everyone very young to people my age and even older. Um, what I would suggest, if there are any cuts, you would consider the library as well as the parks and recreation service the basis of the community and any one-off events that draw a lot of resources, those should be the first under consideration to be cut. The library is actually given to the town, I think, a few years ago by the Blumenthal family. That saved the town a lot of money already. And I would think they would look negatively upon the fact that you with their gift, you're cutting back access to their gift. Uh, finally, when I think about downtown, and I drive through downtown, I just drove through it today, this morning, uh, this afternoon, there's not a lot going on. I can think of three major draws to, for coming to the downtown. One's the courthouse, two Sunnyside, and three's the library. If you only want to look at it financially, Cutting back on hours in the library will cut back on traffic through the town and hurt the, uh, the finances 
and the and the shops and businesses in the town. Thank you. Thank you. Howling Flexer, Five Francis Street, and Danielson, I just want to say that I think if we're going to be making cuts, which I know we have to, it should be equally applied across departments. It's really easy to scapegoat the Department of Parks and Recreation and the library. And I can safely say that, and I don't know for certain, but if you haven't been to the library, you need to go. It's not just about taking out books. It's about helping people find jobs. It's about helping them fill out their taxes. It's about helping them learn how to use the computer and apply for jobs. So those are things that are critical to the functionality of this town. The library does way more than you think it does. And I think if you're going to make a cut and we want to reduce the budget, which we have to do, it should be across departments equally. So take the $175,000 that you're proposing for both of these departments and apply it across every department. Planning, town manager's office. If you want to be, be a good, good faith effort, maybe you guys could reduce your budget. I see that you have an administrative assistant position open for the for the constabulary. That is not a position filled. That's $61,000 right there. And why aren't we talking about the bottle revenue of $97,000? We should be using that to offset these reductions that harm kids, families, elderly who need these services so badly. I can't tell you how many people enjoy the story time with Suzad Easterly. Let me pronounce her first name right. It's very important. I have elderly parents. Having these programs are vital to them. Having the library is vital for, to people. They run programs for kids of people of all ages, from kids to elderly. And if you're going to make cuts, cut, cut it across the board so it's fair and it appears fair. It doesn't appear biased. Also, I just want to note, when we're making Board of Education cuts, and I don't know what that plan is, I was on the school board at a time where we asked for supplemental appropriations. In the, in the range of one to $1.4 million, I think three years in a row. So you really need to think about that. You really need to think about that because that is going to impact everyone going forward because then if you have to do a supplemental appropriation just for context, that gets added to next year's school board budget. We, they're making as many, they've made so many sacrifices and we keep complaining about how the educational system is terrible and no one wants to work here we should be talking about why no one wants to work here because we keep cutting educational services and if you want to make cuts then you need to work be really deliberate about that and the reason why taxes are going up is not because of the school board and not because of the library and not because of the parks and recreation department and we need to be more transparent about that. And we also need to be more transparent and let people know what avenues are available for them to be able to get help with their property taxes. Because this is crippling a lot of people here in this audience and people may be watching at home. And we need to get that with that information, putting it four clicks on your website is really not helpful. And the fact that I had to go at the last town meeting and tell people that they could call 211 and get a tax abatement from OPM, I shouldn't have had to do that. I don't even hold elected office anymore. So you need to think about the things that matter. Education matters. Having access for elderly kids and families to use resources in the town is really vital. So make the cuts across the board and be reasonable. And then sell it, because that's what we're supposed to do as elected officials. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Sumner. I live at 23 Tamarack Circle in Dayville. Um, I've been blessed to live in Killingly for 23 years. I have three children who have attended Killingly schools and I have worked at Killingly schools since I was a baby. Um, and it's a great place to work. I would like to say also, don't parks and recreation, my kids have gone through for 18 to 20 years. They go to the library, all those services are so needed for our, this generation of kids. Um, but I'm here tonight to ask you not to make any further cuts to the education bu budget. Cuts hurt kids. Um, I feel like the superintendent and the administration did a really good job of cutting $700,000 from the budget that they gave you guys last time um, when you asked them to cut $700,000. Um, we deserve fully staffed schools and those, these, these will inevitably have to cut more positions if we, if we have more drastic cuts. People will lose their jobs. The students of Killingly will lose people who teach them and who care about them. It's important that we fully fund our schools and show the kids of Killingly that their town cares about them. Um, I mean, I've been, I, I appreciate everything that you guys do for the town. I know it's not an easy job, but 
I also work in the ta in the school, and you just need to know that the cuts do truly affect the children that go there. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly McClellan, 15 School Street, Danielson. And uh, <laughs> like I said last year, I have anxiety. So I'll shake, but I, I wrote down a few things this evening so that I don't skip too much. My husband, Ed, and I uh, lead the KPRG Community Drumming Circle. I think tonight, for me and Ed, we'll give you a little progress report because the Parks and Recreation Department helps us so much to accomplish the things that are happening, which are very exciting. We don't have to worry too much. And what I have found out about the Parks and Recreation Department is that there are so many other people working and covering things that I don't have to worry about. That's why the director is so important. The, ins the assistant director is so important. The supervisor is vital. All of the volunteers at the Parks and Recreation Department bring solidarity, good mental health, socializing for all ages. The people that work or, or get some sort of, and I don't know that they do, but people that run a yoga and meditation class they're so vital. When I'm really stressed out from trying to put together a drum circle, I've taken the meditation class with Lisa Ennis. Phenomenal. Um, but as I said, I want to give you a little bit of a progress report because it's very exciting. But before I do, I want to say one statement. The support of the entire team, prog team brings progress and growth <coughs> of individuals, groups, and the town. There's no doubt in my mind that this is how vital it is for us to have the Killingley's Park, Killingley Parks and Recreation Department working the way they are now and more. So here we go with a little bit of, um, pro of progress report. I won't take much time, but the first thing I want to point out, and I never knew this person, but Foxy Fortin's granddaughter came to drum with me last summer in Owen Bell. I brought a bass drum and a couple of hand drums and decided to go in the summer day to sit in the park with any kid or parent that wanted to come over and hit a drum. Let's see how it goes. And I had a pretty good response. It wasn't planned. It was sort of a pop-up. Um, but I made so many friendly interactions and connections with people was lovely and everybody got to get a little bit of stress out I'll tell you that but the kids loved it and of course the highlight for me is that I, I met Foxy Fortin's granddaughter who loved the drums we just had a drum circle a couple of weeks ago on Saturday night we had 35 people we went to a drum circle in Acton Mass on Sunday night and at when events when it was time for a break in the drumming and we anybody that wanted to talk about the ne their next drumming event was allowed to tell I explained that I'm from Killingly Connecticut remember Acton Mass is right next to Harvard and the, and I told them that we we're with the Killingly the town of Killingly Parks and Recreation Department and that we I said, we're, we're starting to gain traction. We had 35 people, and I can't tell you how many people out of that 50 came over and said, you're not gaining traction, you're there. You're there. You're accomplishing the success of a healthy drum circle. Drum circles bring a stress release from many people who have anxiety, much like I do. They also bring joy and happiness, the freedom to express yourself as you are, who you are, where you are, when you are. And it's delightful, and it's meaningful, and there's, that's one way that we know we can let go of a whole lot of stuff that goes in our day. 
if we remember to childhood or even our toddlers, they take out the pots and pans and beat the crap out of them. All that metal noise just drives us parents crazy, but it's also a way to left. get rid of stress. Thank you. We've, we've started to eat at Giant Pizza. We're looking for other restaurants before we set up for our uh, <coughs> drum circles. And we're traveling to not only Massachusetts, Rhode Island, we're, we're uh, um, as far no as North Haven in Connecticut, and we are making connections, collaborations with all three states, and they are all very interested in this beautiful town because that's what we hear. The drive is gorgeous. We're considering living here. We're considering opening business. We're considering supporting your town. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christina Main. I live at 219 Coomer Hill Road in Davo. I also work in the district and I have three daughters who attend our schools. I would like to ask the town council members if any of you are or ever have been teachers. Have you ever worked in any way in education? Have you ever stepped foot in any of our five schools and observed a classroom or spent time with any of our students? Do any of you have children in KPS? If the answer to any or all of those is no, I ask what qualifies you to be able to make educational decisions? Please consider the effect additional cuts will have on the schools and our students themselves. We say one of the goals is the retention of good teachers and preparing our kids for the future. I question how we are prioritizing that when our elected town officials decide that they know what students and educators need better than those educators themselves. <clears throat> our students' education is at stake. I know I want more for my kids to be better, smarter, more prepared for their future. How can this be possible by not giving them every opportunity available and continuing to cut services and supports that so many of our families rely on? I also would just like to say how important our library is to the community. I have been taking my girls there literally since the day they were born. Some days it saved me with a place to go with three small children who were not always quiet or not always well behaved. They have participated in almost all of their programs, read many of their books. The staff there know my children and my family. They know what they will read. They suggest new books whenever we come in. I truly believe that my girls are avid readers due to the amazing librarian staff, library staff, and the wonderful library that we are so lucky to have in this community. Thank you. Thank you. My name is, <clears throat> pardon the voice, my name is Jay Vandenberg. I live at 136 Thompson Pike in Dayville, Connecticut. I'm also the president of the Friends of the Killingly Public Library. Um, all the comments that have been made here are very valid and, and good comments. I don't know what your total um, dollar mark is for your cuts, but I believe that um, the one individual who indicated that it should be across the board has got the right idea. I don't, uh, it would be helpful to know what your total cuts are going to be required because that way we can see that. Um, the other idea that it came for it was to go back to the level funding from 2024, 2023-24. Um, we are all in a time of crunch, and everything costs more. Um, gas costs more, electricity costs more, everything costs more. But at the same time, we have to manage with equity everybody's programs. We just can't take and say, well, we're going to cut four programs and they're all going to lose so X number of dollars. The staffing at the library is critical to the programs they provide. They provide reading programs for the children. They provide assistance with job help for individuals. They provide help for people who do not have the ability to have the Internet at home so they can go to the library and have access to the Internet. Um, if you cut staff, you're going to wind up cutting programs because there's no way to run a program without staff. And, um, and it's important. Um, as has been mentioned here a lot, many, many people in this community use the library. And many of them are senior citizens. Many of them are people who do not have resources at home, um, who are striving to provide for their grandchildren uh, uh, support in their schools um, and they can't do that at home so they come to the library 
But in order to have the library function, you have to have the staffing. So if you cut staffing, you cut programs. <clears throat> I think that you should go back and look at your budget and considering keeping the budget from 2023 20, 24. And if that is not enough, look at level funding cuts for everybody. Everybody takes a little bit of a hit, nobody takes a major hit, and we can get by. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is John LaBelle. I live at 57 Island Road in Dayville. I'd like to address these comments not only to this August board, but also to everyone here in the audience. I took a look at the spending and increases in spending on the budget. And since my, uh, going back to May, uh, I'm sorry, 2021. The following percentage increases have taken place. Uh, finance, 13%. Uh, town manager, 10%. Assessor, 24%. Technology, 17%. Engineering, 25%. Highway maintenance, 61%, recreation, 20%, parks and grounds, 2%, safety inspections, 10%, animal control, 30%, law enforcement, 4%, Human Services Subsidies, 60%. Special Reserves and Programs, 36%. And the Library, 8%. I agree with the previous speakers in terms of their, their comments. And I would encourage everyone here to ask 10 of their friends to get out and vote. The reason this, the reason we are here tonight is because of such a low turnout of voters. You can't vote if you stay home. So please, talk to your friends, your neighbors. Go out and vote and we won't be here again. Vote your conscience. Vote how you feel. Let these people know how you feel about the budget. They live in the community just like you do. They pay taxes just like you do. They work very hard at trying to make this community a better place. I come to many of their meetings, and believe me, they are working hard. The uh, law enforcement, such a delicate subject to take on. However, we started a constabulary back a number of years ago, and we keep adding and adding to it. I'd like to know what the comparison would be if we went back to the state police. What it, would it be costing us? Would it be costing us what it is now or more? But we keep adding and adding. Um, and obviously we need safety and police protection. I live at the lake and about once every six months I see a police car drive by. Um, it's difficult to cover this entire community and I, I imagine the um, police force has to go where they're needed. Let me know when I'm out of five minutes, okay. <laughs> um, the library and recreation is so important 
to this community. With over 50% of the population over 60, uh, to me it's important that we provide the services and the staffing necessary to keep people healthy, not only physically but mentally. Um, and please, everyone here, talk to at least 10 of your friends, get out and vote, and let's get this over with so that this fine group of people can continue to manage uh, as best as they see fit. Now, not, none of them are perfect, okay? So don't, don't try to make them perfect. I know I'm not per perfect, but please give them feedback as to what you want, not just here tonight, but on an ongoing basis through the year. They need your feedback. Please come to meetings and also volunteer to be on commissions. That's how we make this community a better place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Karen Avery and I live on Green Hollow Road in Danielson and I hadn't planned on getting up, but I really need to speak from my heart. Um, my son has stage four cancer and my granddaughter, I have her, she loves everything that they're gonna put more taxes on. The little theater has, has helped her in so many, so many ways, I, I can't even tell you, it's like a family. Her confidence, her self-esteem, has, has grown and now she wants to take dance lessons and she's, she sees her father getting sicker and sicker all the time. And I, the Parks and Recreation, the library, they've always, they've just been part of her, her little soul and the school and she goes to KCS and she's even loves it so much she's afraid to go into the next school next year because she loves her teachers and all the staff so much. And, um, that's all I want to say. Thank you. No, I'm Farron Square Rock Road in Danielson, and uh, I'd just like to uh, give some support to this town council. Um, I think they've gotten some criticism tonight that is not deserved. Um, they put together a budget, the uh, schools put together a budget, and your fellow voters turned it down. I thought it was a reasonable bu budget. I voted for both of them, but I was outvoted. So if you have a problem with how this process is going down, um, look at your, your neighbors, friends and neighbors. They voted the budgets down. And that's why these people are put in a position to try to come up with a lower budget to satisfy the will of the voters. It's just that simple. So thank you, Town Council, for taking on this task and all the time you volunteer for, you don't get paid. Uh, you put a lot of work into this. And um, I think sometimes, and, and tonight included, you get criticism that's undeserved and really has nothing to do with you. So thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Vincent Ward, 136 Cutler Road, Killingly, Connecticut. Uh, just so you know, my wife works for the uh, Killingly Parks and Rec. As a retired parole officer, I can guarantee you that if you continue to cut services which impact children and youth, you will guarantee that at some point, some child, one or more, will fall through the cracks. The most important services that we can have in this community are services that both educate our kids and give our kids something that 
impacts their life. Things like the Parks and Rec programs impact their lives, give them positive things to do. If there are things in the budget that can be revisited and can be cut, I'm in favor of a constabulary, but there's no reason that we can't postpone one constable instead of, instead of cutting programs that are going to impact our children. Think about this. And if you decide that you want to do that, then that decision rests on your shoulders and you have to carry that with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any more public comment? We have nine minutes left for public comment. Hi, I'm Claudette Stockwell. I'm the library director. Uh, I do not work in this town, but I have worked for this town for 22 years. And um, I will pass this around for you just to get a glance at how many people we do see. Uh, last year, we saw 78,759 visitors. If we continue with where we are right now, we're expected to see almost 89,000 this year. Materials, I know people like to think that maybe it's just e-books. It's not the way of the future. We've had over 82,000 materials borrowed last year. We've had almost 15,000 people participate in the programs that we offer. 24,380 computer and Wi-Fi sessions happened last year. We are the people that help with the digital divide. My staff, I, I can't say enough. There's many staff here with me tonight that have not just been at the library for a year, I have someone that's been on staff for over 40 years. What does that say about turnover? We like what we do. We love our community. It really, really, like, I'm, my heart, it just, it hurts my heart that we have to have these cuts. I understand why. Um, I do encourage if you haven't been to the library to come. I can, I can say that at least one town council member has brought her children to the library because I used to do story times with them. So I will give this to Mary to pass around for you to see and what cuts look like to us on the other side. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Uh, Bucky Lobush. Parks and Recreation Director. Again, I'm not a um, resident of the town either, um, but I did want to speak uh, a little bit about the potential cut um, of the position of Recreation Supervisor, which is potentially on the table. <clears throat> the, only, the thing that disturbs me a little bit is that last year, almost at the exact same time we were here fighting for the same position and the town council uh, chose not to cut the position however we had a homegrown killingly resident uh, who was in that position um, who basically was uh, starting a family uh, was hoping to have his life here in killingly and because of the stress and the uncertainty of coming every year and finding out whether or not they may have a position, they ended up moving to Tennessee with their family. Now, we were fortunate to fill this position again with another homegrown, killingly adult now, Tommy DeRozier, okay, who sits here, who started a family has two small kids and a wife. One child, when he started here, within the first month, was flown to Hartford Hospital and almost died. OK? 
okay? The um, town hall came together, donated um, sick time so that he could spend time with his child in the hospital, okay? S that amount of stress should be enough to not have to have him come here and not know whether or not he has a job. Um, we're getting ready to move into Westfield. We've started progress, okay? I don't know how we can move forward when we're taking two steps backwards. Now, I understand the situation with trying to cut budgets. I get it, okay? But we've got to find a way to make it better. Um, I just think that if we can put our heads together and get the people, obviously there's a lot of people here, so I think there's a lot of interest in getting these budgets passed. I just think not enough people came out to vote. That's what I'm hoping. Um, and I hope we can um, basically move on from this and we can do those positive things. I came to this meeting tonight and I couldn't believe that Main Street actually has got vehicles almost up and down it because we have businesses now that are starting up on Main Street, okay? We talked about Spectacular, all right? Um, you guys wanted us to bring people down into Main Street. We did that. Three-fourths of Main Street was full in October, all right? That last section down there, we, I, I'm telling you, my goal is to get all of Main Street filled, and I finally got New York Pizza to finally commit to helping us out with that, with that event. So, you know, we want to put on programming for the town, and I, I'm just hoping that uh, we can figure something out here, whether it's tonight or at the polls, um, when you guys go back to vote. All right? Thank you very much. Thank you. We have two minutes of public comment left if anyone would like to come up and speak. Good evening. I'm Alina Vandenberg, uh, 136 Thompson Pike in Dayville. Um, my husband and I are actively involved in our community as far as in the Attawagan Fire District and in the Friends of the Killingly Public Library. My children all grew up in Killingly, all went to school in Killingly, and have done just fine. And, you know, I don't look at this meeting as a critical thing to you all. I was really sort of taken aback by that comment because I just think it's people expressing their feelings. And they're not saying, you're doing a terrible job. No, you're doing a great job. And it's not easy, we, I know, because we've been working with the budget in Natawagan and it's hard. And um, I just wanted to express my appreciation to you all for what you are doing in behalf of us. And it's been really hard when I looked at the revaluation of my house, I had a heart attack. And I'm saying how, I have to say, I'm, I'm retired. My husband and I are retired. We don't make big bucks. But you know, I'm saying, I think I have to save extra money so that I can afford to pay my taxes come in July. So I'm like really conflicted, you know? We want the budget that's gonna serve the community, but we have to help the people so that they can function too. Thank you. Thank you. Right now we've come close to the end of the public comment period. Um, I don't know if there are other members who would still like to speak. If there are, could you give a show of hands and I will entertain a motion to extend public comment period. Okay. All right, last call for public comment. One minute left. Seeing none, we'll move on in the agenda. My name is Brittany Carlson. I live at 376 Main, Main Street. I work at the library. I love the library. I love everything that we offer. Um, Parks and Rec is amazing. Board of It is amazing. But as Claudette said, with our numbers, we are bopping. We've got 80,000 people a year, and we need our staff. We cannot handle <laughs> the amount of people through those doors if we lose um, 
more staff members. So I would just like to say maybe we could look at a different number, maybe, you know, think about it a little closer before we lose uh, important members of our community. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll move on in the agenda. Next item up is item 3A, budget deliberations, consideration and action on a resolution setting the town of Killingly operating budget for fiscal year 2024 to 2025. Uh, can I get a motion to adopt this? If you, at this moment, there is no numbers filled into that yep. because you have to uh, deliberate, deliberate on those first. numbers. Yep. So um, I don't know that you can have necessarily a motion on the floor because you have no numbers right now. They're blank. Um, <clears throat> So um, you probably need to get to an understanding of where your numbers are going to be. I'd like to be able to present to you the four options that I was requested to pull together, which one of those op options is largely why a number of the individuals that attended tonight um, w was uh, very concerned with. Um, but uh, to start with um, the initial conversation um, with the town council and what we heard largely at um, public hearing and annual town meeting was the activation of fund balance to assist in lowering the overall mill rate impact from revaluation so if you have in front of you scenario one um, which was all left at your tables scenario one um, the town we closed on uh, our borrowing of ten million dollars for the Westfield Avenue project because of our strong credit rating, and that credit rating is a double A plus because of our um, financial uh, outlook that our credit rating gave us. So credit ratings with the town are very similar to your own personal credit ratings. Um, when you go for a mortgage, the better your credit rating, the lower your interest co cost. So when we went through that uh, sale of our bonds, the town actually attracted nine bidders to that sale. And when we sold the bonds, we were able to sell them at a premium of almost $700,000. What we opted to do was take that premium and reduce the principal amount. So we closed on those bonds on May 9th, okay? So we got our final debt service schedule that was going, that we were gonna have to actually pay on for next year. And so because of that premium, we were able to reduce the principal amount, but also in the interest amount. And so that provides a savings of almost 240,000, of just about $240,000 to next year's budget. So the scenario for scenario one has just taken that reduction for overall operating uh, on the general government side. Um, one of the other components that uh, since we were successfully able to um, fund our, uh, you know, sell, sell those bonds and more importantly because we're receiving the um, reimbursements from the state of Connecticut for KMS. There was a period of time in which we were not receiving those. I worked with the commissioner at the state in order to be able to get that, that uh, process moving. And we have started receiving those payments. Um, we had been very conservative on what we were projecting for revenue for interest income because we have two major capital projects going on and without getting the cash from the first capital project from the state in reimbursement, we didn't know that we were gonna have sufficient or a high enough level of available cash to earn interest from. Knowing that we're receiving the, that revenue in and it's reimbursing the amounts that we're able to uh, get revenue interest income on, my proposal is to increase the interest income revenue side by $250,000. Um, <clears throat> The Board of Education, I, there's a cut for $250,000. I leave that completely up to the council, but just put that in as a scenario. I have no idea if that's a pallet of the, of the council. If you wanna go less, whatever, but just for, for calculation purposes. And then the other component that was talked about was the use of fund balance. And we've gone through this process having the conversation around the concern of using fund balance. And I, you know, in our credit rating, um, document that we got from our credit rating agencies one of the one of the things they documented in there is that Killingly with the size and the demographics that Killingly has is not typically in the credit rating of a double-a plus they're usually one credit rating below that 
But because of our strong financial position and our strong commitments and policies around fund balance, they felt confident in giving us a double A plus and keeping that as a stable outlook. That be, which is why throughout this entire process, we have been continually articulating the use of fund balance toward capital projects. But that being said, we are in a revaluation year. And in this revaluation, um, residential properties did go up higher than commercial properties. And it is, uh, you know, the council can activate the use of fund balance at any time um, during this budgetary process. Um, and as far as the conversation to our credit rating agencies, we can talk about the plan if the council so chooses to, to use this plan to smooth in that impact over a two year period. So activate 750,000 of fund balance with the knowledge that next year you're gonna reduce that amount to show the credit rating agencies that you're stepping off that, I'm using my savings to pay my mortgage, right? You're stepping down off of that process. So with that, um, so the proposed budget that went to the, the budgets that went to the referendum pr produced a mill rate of 21.15. That's what was went to referendum. This scenario before you would produce a mill rate of 20.33. So that's a reduction of 6.55. Um, I did get a little bit of feedback on that one, and so um, actually I'm going to have you bypass scenario two for right now. Go to scenario three. Scenario three was um, a little bit of co a concern around the uh, sustainability of using $750,000 for um, operational costs out of the fund balance. As we have said over and over, our fund we are, we're trying to maintain within our guidelines of fund balance. I did. I think I left for all of you the outline of fund balance projection. So currently, for the estimated 24 fiscal year 24, where we're going to end this year, we're estimating our fund balance to be at about 25.6. Our guide, our policy, is uh, having us uh, keep our fund balance between 16 and 25 percent. So we have the availability to invest in something. The council already had activated $2 million for the next budget year for uh, capital improvements on roads, um, which is following that plan that you would have established um, <clears throat> over a year ago. Um, and so then activating an additional $750,000 brings that fund balance to 21.3. If you step it down one year <clears throat> to the following year and only use 400,000 in next in the subsequent budget year, you're down to 17.8. So you're getting to the very uh, you're getting to the edge of your fund balance guide posts. Um, and then if you were to continue to finalize that pavement management um, at two million in fiscal year 2027, you're at 14.9 so you're just below now these numbers are in, are assuming that there is no turn back we've heard from the Board of Education based on their um, filling of all of their positions and um, uh, this place the places that they've already cut they're only anticipating turning back what could go into non-lapsing so we're assuming no no turn backs from that so the, the question was, uh, do we not take 750 and rather go with 500? So scenario three is exactly what I just described in scenario one, except instead of using 750,000 of fund balance, it uses 500,000 of fund balance. And that sets a mill rate of 20.47. Um, <clears throat> The last scenario, scenario four, um, after I had shared those scenarios with the chair and the vice chair, I received direction from the council chair that they were that the council wanted to look at what an additional two hundred thousand dollar cut would be from the town side of the budget. Um, <clears throat> that's a su substantial cut on the town side of the budget. Um, <clears throat> in going through the budget. It would be wonderful to be able to say that we're going to divide that by the number of departments and just take that amount from every single one of the budgets. But the, the, the there's an 
most of the departments are on a shoestring at this point, which means it's still cutting staff in those departments, which means you're cutting um, a fair amount of full-time staff to part-time staff and potentially impacting all these other services. So I did have conversations with recreation, library, and highway department to review, because it's really staff, which also impacts programming. Um, and so to cut an additional $200,000, um, we would be looking at potentially cutting the recreation supervisor position, um, a driver laborer position in the highway department, um, two part-time positions in the library, and reducing one full-time position to a part-time position in the library. So as you've heard from many here, but the recreation supervisor position, he's very integral in within a lot of the programming. He is the main director of our youth, of our youth hoop. Um, He's acted as a referee for much of our youth group, youth hoop, which has saved the town about $4,000 in referee costs. He oversees our summer camp. So both of those programs being the, um, really the direct responsibility of that position, both of those programs would have enrollment changes. We would have to decrease the number of enrollments and likely rethink, rethink especially youth hoop, how that would function because of how much uh, Tommy is invested in the youth hoop or that position is invested in the youth hoop um, It also impacts all of our other community events that we that we have that take place That is one less hand in all of those um, the driver laborer position that position um, You know cutting a driver laborer position means that we are increasing the um, amount of time it takes for our you know, I'm going to focus on winter first um, fo um, for our, the, all the plow routes have to be, and, and road treatment routes have to be changed. They all have to be increased, which decreases the frequency that they can make laps, right? So it takes them longer to clean up the roads, longer to treat the roads, um, and gives a higher exposure to, um, you know, poor, poor road conditions. Um, it also generates higher overtime because it takes longer for all of those uh, components to take place. Um, also with the driver or laborer, um, right now we have uh, project crews and we have maintenance crews. By eliminating even that one position out of the highway, um, we don't have that balance of being able to have specific project crews and uh, maintenance crews, which means if we get a call about you know, a dead animal, a pothole, a tree down, we may be longer in response to that simply because we have a whole crew out on a project. We can't just take one person out of that crew for safety purposes and send them off to go and manage another situation. Um, so uh, there's a number of impacts on the highway side. Also, it, it minimizes the amount of, it lessens the amount of work that we can take in-house as opposed to contracting out. So we would likely look at having to contract out because we don't have the ability to necessarily staff the individual um, crews um, appropriately. So we would have to contract that out, which makes things more expensive for the town and also less flexible for the town because now we're basing it on contractor schedules. Um, and then as far as the li library, Reducing two part-time positions and reducing one full-time position to a part-time means the loss of hours. We would have to close the library on Saturdays, and we would have to reduce the hours of the library on the weekdays by one hour in the evening, and we would have to close early an extra hour. So reviewing all of these, um, you know, I strongly advocated when I got this request that the council consider taking the savings we know we can get from the debt service, activating the fund balance, this is what we heard predominantly from our town meeting and also from public hearing, um, doing whatever cut the board, the town council determines on the board of ed side um, and uh, resending this out without draconian cuts. Um, I appreciate everyone's comments about doing it fair across the board. If it was an easy way to do this fair across the board and take a, num a certain number, a number out of every budget, I would have done that. I don't want to talk about individuals' jobs. This, I know, I know how stressful this is. My first year in Killingly, 
my position was being discussed at the at the um, at the town council level for cut. Um, I know how much you think about whether or not you want to stay somewhere when they're talking about cutting your position potentially every year. Um, I never want to talk about cutting individuals. And the reason why you have everybody, a lot of people have turned out is because when I find out that I'm going to be potentially having to give a scenario that has people's positions being cut and the council is potentially going to be talking about that, I notify that staff in advance. I think that's only fair. I would never want to have a staff member even learn about the potential concept of their job being lost from a Facebook Live post. Um, I just don't think that that's fair. Um, they should have the opportunity to understand what is potentially being even discussed, even if it ultimately is not fully contemplated, but just discussed within the, count within the council chambers and in a public meeting. So those are the three scenarios that I gave you. The fourth scenario, there was a request to see what, would, what it would look like if we added back the position in parks moving from seasonal to full time. I did prepare that and I do have that. I don't know if there's any pallet from the council to consider that. I have a question. Um, so this was reviewed between yourself and Tammy prior this these cuts here of the four proposed we have um, just, just to give everybody in the audience I'm yeah. gonna start from the beginning before we jump in um, the reason why we're here tonight is both budgets failed and um, for those of you who haven't had a chance to vote on a on our town budget and the BOE budget if you vote no there's an adi two additional boxes you can check when you're voting no whether you feel the budget is too high or you feel it's too low so when the town side failed, of the th of the 300, we had 354 people who said the town budget was too high. We had 13 people vote that it was too low. Overwhelmingly, the people that voted against the budget, the town budget, said it was too high. BOE is, was very similar. You had 351 people who voted saying the Board of Education budget was too high and at the and 27 people who voted that the Board of Education budget was too low. Based off those budget results, we're back here tonight, we have to deliberate on the budget. Based off the voters, um, me personally, I wouldn't feel comfortable without trying to find some cuts. Now, the council as a whole um, has not deliberated on any cuts at this point. The conversations that have gone on so far, Ms. Calorio presented us with scenario one last Wednesday after the budget failed, which that was, um, let me grab my glasses because I'm not going to be able to read it without them, which was, um, as she spoke about, the um, $239,392, which was recognized as savings based off of the debt we issued. On, and that debt had closed on November 9th. Um, <laughs> because her budget was prepared prior to November 9th, that wasn't money um, she could recognize building this budget. So that is something that's come up after she had built her budget, after she had presented to the council, um, and after we had had our annual town meeting. Um, she did propose in the initial one um, an additional cut of $250,000. Now, just to clarify, Ms. Gloria, did you have any conversations with Board of Education or the superintendent regarding that $250,000? Um, so I did speak to the superintendent, um, and you know they recognize that whatever the council sets as a number um, is what is set as a number. I, you know, I. I am not proposing a $250,000 cut from the Board of Education. Um, that number is completely up to the town council to determine, right? So I was asked to provide a calculation um, and um, asked for guidance around that. I didn't receive any guidance. Again, you could cut this down to $50,000, right? It was only simply to put in a scenario knowing that a cut needed to be made on the Board of Ed side because of the way that the budget vote came in with no too high. Right, so I'm not I'm not recommending a cut of two hundred fifty thousand dollars from the board of ed. I want to be perfectly clear on that. That is entirely up to the town council um, in what your decisions might be around this. Um, but I did I did um, communicate that to the superintendent, and I know the superintendent is here. But um, I did communicate 
uh, you know, a potential cut of up to $250,000. And again, I have no idea if that's where, I have no idea what the council's palette is on that. Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, I'd like to um, waive um, the rules and allow the superintendent to, if she had anything to offer the assistant superintendent. Um, We have a motion and a second. Discussion? So the motion and the second is to allow the superintendent and the assistant superintendent um, to make comment um, regarding the any further potential budget cuts. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now, would you like to come up and speak? I, I do completely understand that without having the Board of Education here, any potential cuts would be up to them. Um, but if you have anything to add, feel free. And I only suggest that because I know you know your budget really well. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Good evening, everyone. Um, certainly, um, you know, we were all disappointed that um, both of our budgets failed. Um, but we understand that this is not an easy process for both Board of Education and Town Council. Um, we appreciate all the work on both sides. Um, you know, any cuts past what we've already made, which is about 703,000, um, will be impactful. I can't say they can't be impactful. Uh, of course, they will be impactful. Um, depending on what that number is, it depends how impactful that will be. Um, you know, we do have um, a minimum, minimal budget requirement, um, particularly we are an alliance district, we can't go lower than what we were last year, so we only have another $703,000 before we do hit that kind of zero uh, percent increase. Um, that number would be very difficult. Um, to find uh, to find places to cut without cutting positions that impact students. Um, so finding the maneuvers that we made for the first 703,000, uh, we took on a bit of risk in terms of those maneuvers using non-lapsing, um, as, as you know. Um, just kind of doing a little bit of a, a different approach to budgeting and preserving our positions, which is really important to our Board of Education to preserve our positions um, that, uh, and the programming that we provide, the experiences that we provide to our students. So another 703,000 on top of that will be very hard to find without now going into positions and programming. Um, and so I guess that would be all I have to say. Thank unless you. you have questions. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, another thing I, I want to talk about, too, is I looked into the change in the grand list um, and ran a bunch of numbers to come up with percentages and looked at what the budget that the one that failed, where we were at with that. So on the residential part of the grand list, there was a 47.9% increase on the residential properties on the grand list. Whereas the rest of the grand list, which is industrial, commercial, um, motor vehicle, other land, and personal properties, only had a 5.98% increase. What happens then is because the residential side increased so much, there's a shift of the tax burden. More of the tax burden falls on the residential properties. So I ran the numbers on that, did a bunch of calculations. Based off that 47.9% increase, while there was only a 5.98% increase on the, everything other than residential, it led to if there was a $0 budget increase across the board for the town and for the Board of Ed, it would have resulted in a 17.99% increase in the average residential property tax. If you include the 2.9% budget increase in the budget that failed, that brought the average residential property tax increase up to 18.51%.
as that was, the budget that failed, the impact on the rest of the grant list, your industrial, commercial, motor vehicle, other land and personal properties, would have resulted on those portions having a 14.67% decrease in their taxes. So, and the thing I looked at is there is, it's basically almost impossible without completely gutting the budget because of the MBR, we can't go below what the current Board of Education budget is. In order to cut the town side to get to where everybody's property taxes wouldn't have at least an, uh, on average a substantial increase, we would have to completely gut the town side budget. And I know we can't do that. Um, the thing I looked at too is revals every five years. If you factor a hypothetical 3% inflation rate, which we all know inflation has been well over that recently, um, but hypothetically a 3% inflation rate, if you compound that 3% inflation rate over five years, you end up with a 12.55% increase. Um, the reason why I'm bringing these numbers up is I know some of you may not follow the numbers. I may have rattled them off too fast, but a lot, this isn't like either budget increased substantially. This is a matter of there was a shift in a reval, and it's really hitting the residential side. Um, and the fact that both budgets failed, um, I know we have to work and see what we can do, especially considering you basically had a 10 to 1 person who said, for every 10 people who said our budgets were too high, there was only one person that said it was too low. So when you take that into consideration, me personally, I, I feel we got to look at cuts. Um, and as I said before, the town council as a whole has not deliberated on any cuts. My conversations with Ms. Calorio, because I had spoken individually with certain council members, pretty much as many as I could, um, would be what would $200,000 in cuts look like on the town side? Um, she had asked if there were any positions specifically, and my response was no. We want to know what would be the least impactful on staff and services. So I know there were comments about cuts proposed by the council. Uh, we never proposed cuts to any specific item. Um, my conversation with the town manager was what would they look like? She knows the staff better than we do. Um, so I wanted her input on that, and we're here tonight to deliberate on the potential cuts that the town manager has proposed. Um, I'm trying to go back through because I did make did make notes as everyone was speaking. I'm just trying to address them all right now. And um, Ms. Maine made the, the comment of what qualifies us to make cuts on a BOE side. Um, I myself was a certified educator, um, vocational technical education. Um, but on regardless of that, the town council can't cut specific line items on a board of ed side. The only thing the town council can do is cut the bottom line, and then we leave that to the superintendent, the board of Ed education, and the experts on that side to figure out how to spend whatever money they get. And the fact that the budget failed both sides, the town and the board of ed side, I feel we've got to work to bring that number down to get a budget that will pass. And in regards to um, the comment regarding uh, going back to the state police, uh, Ms. Caloria, correct me if I'm wrong, but right now we're around that break-even point between what we pay and what it would cost us to have state police, and we have way more coverage than we would if we had just the resident troopers. So when we had four resident state troopers, we were paying, and that was 10 years ago at this point in time, we were paying what we're paying right now for nine constables, one resident state trooper, a... Um, administrator and um, a part-time admin assistant for that um, department so we are and so the the cost for four resident state troopers has increased over those 10 years um, I don't have a current calculation for that but you know if we take our one resident state trooper that we're currently paying for um, <clears throat> we are paying roughly uh, $250,000 a little over $250,000 for the one and also, all of our overtime would then shift to troop overtime, which is can be very substantial throughout the year. Um, we've had a number of years that 
um, it was um, several hundred thousand dollars we had to do um, some significant transfers and potential supplementals on that thank you and um, Ms. Avery I just want to express myself on behalf of the council um, we're sorry to hear what your son's going through um, cancer is not an easy thing for those who are fighting it and then family members as well So at this time, I will open up to other council members if anybody has anything they want to say or uh, make suggestions on places to make cuts. I'd like to reiterate what you said. We didn't come up with any of these cuts here. So any services like the library, the uh, recreation anything like that we wouldn't in my mind I wouldn't come up with that I call these feel-good cuts this is to get everybody upset and, and get out to the meeting which it worked but um I, I, I completely disagree with this so just to let you know there's there's places to cut the budget and not take people's jobs so I disagree with this thank you Mr. Grandelsky. Um, for something, go I like um, scenario one with a modification that we only, instead of a $250,000 cut to the Board of Ed, we have a $50,000 cut. And we take advantage of the principal and interest, the interest income, and the $750,000 from the fund balance. Thank you. Ms. George, I believe you had your hand up. Yeah, I wanted to say I apologize on behalf of the council as well to have um, had so much stress and anxiety put on everybody here. Um, and I, I'm terribly sorry, Ms. Avery, especially to you. Um, I follow Mr. Anderson with my thoughts for your family, but I'm terribly sorry that you had to go through that tonight. I, I feel really bad right now for you. We never talked about cutting any of your jobs. <laughs> like this is, we are in such a tough place in the world right now. And we have such a strong community. Why would we want to do anything to hurt that? You're all valuable. And the last thing I personally would ever consider is cutting staff. I, I just I'm so angry it's even on here I I'm, when I get mad I get like this so I'm terribly sorry that there, there's no way I would ever vote to cut any of your jobs and I'm gonna be quiet now if if I can I want to I want to make sure that um, I, I articulate this appropriately um, so the council gave me direction or the council chair gave me direction to cut an additional $200,000. The council here has not deliberated or directed any specific cuts, but $200,000 is very impactful to the town budget. There is, we have laid everything out. Um, we've cut everywhere that we could cut, getting to the budget that we have before you. And I know that there are plenty of people that still think you know government is fraud and that we are hiding things in the budget. We are not. Um, I've sat with you all and gone over every single line of this budget. We do, on the town side, a zero-based budget every year. Um, when we are talking a $200,000 bu uh, budget decrease, we are, we are talking about positions. And I don't do this as a scare tactic. I don't do this as a feel-good anything. This is not feel-good. This is about articulating what does that impact actually mean if you're going to cut $200,000 out of the town side of the budget. Um, so <clears throat> the council did not did not request these cuts. They requested, the council chair requested $200,000 out of the town side of the budget. That's what was requested. My job is to articulate what does that $200,000 mean and what is the impact of that $200,000. That's what I brought before everyone tonight. That's what I bring to the town council. So no, the council, I want to make sure everyone in the room is aware, council did not ask to cut these positions. However, 
I specifically have the department heads talk to the individuals that when we are giving or talking about a scenario or even presenting a scenario that might include somebody's position or more than one position, even if the council ultimately says there's no way we would do that, that person should be aware that, that there was a request and that that is part of that conversation because they have every right to know that. Um, so that's, that's why the staff were informed of the deliberations taking place. Um, and I'm sure they shared that with, with others. Um, so they could come out and have a voice. Um, as everyone or many, I think there's some confusion around the reconvened annual town meeting. Um, tonight, the town council will set a budget for both the Board of Ed side and the town side. You guys will set a budget. That will no longer have the ability to be changed by the public on the town meeting floor. July 3rd, when we reconvene for the uh, reconvened annual town meeting, on June 3rd, July 3rd, I don't know what month it is. On June 3rd, when we reconvene on the annual town meeting, it is for discussion purposes only. There are no budgetary changes, which is why many felt the, reason, the need to come out tonight and express their concerns around potential deliberations that may happen by the council, because this is the only night to make that change. This is the only night to inform, um, because at the reconvened annual town meeting that'll happen here on June 3rd, nobody gets to make a change to those numbers. The numbers that you set tonight will be the numbers that go to referendum vote on the 11th. So to be clear, I completely own the proposals that are before you for the four, uh, for that option four. Um, but $200,000 is incredibly impactful. I'd like to uh, clarify. So basically, the past couple of years, the cuts have been to the library and have been to the board, the uh, board of recreation so I believe you could have cut somewhere else so I would say we go with s scenario four but instead of making these cuts we deduct that money out of the road budget to re to replenish what we would have to cut for here so I just want to make sure I understand the road pavement uh, plan for two million dollars for the road Correct. for the yes. capital projects which is being fully offset by uh, fund balance that'll have no so effect. you're gonna that'll have no that'll impact have no unless but you're taking the fund balance and offsetting the mill rate right so you're saying use an additional amount out of the fund balance to put towards operating costs other than the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars that the town manager proposed but that two hundred fifty thousand is already in the current budget correct it is but it doesn't hit the mill rate so it would have no impact on taxes in a sense you're just taking money from the general fund using more money from the general fund to offset offset operating costs okay so you, in a sense you wouldn't be making any cut it's just shuffling money around which if you can save all the jobs, I don't see a problem with that. If we can get it from something other than people's livelihood and the services we provide very well in this town, then why wouldn't we do that? So the additional $200,000 is, is a reduction of 0.11 mills. Um, so again, the council can activate instead of 750,000, you can activate more, it's just you need to have a plan going forward and the knowledge going into next year's budget that you're going to have an increase, right? Because you're going to have that. So the town's people are going to say to us, okay, so you took money out of the general fund. We just, we just played the shuffle game. So we not, we're not making, we're asking the board of education to take $250,000 potentially out of their budget, but we're really not making any attempt to take any money out of our budget. We're just, we're just taking money that we have earned through interest and uh, I guess the bonds and we're, we're applying that to it. So it's kind of cheating. I, I agree with Andy. The people said that our budget is too high. We need to reduce expenditures 
not to move money around. We need to reduce our expenditures, just <coughs> like the Board of Education is being asked to do. It's not Thank fair you. to them. Uh, Mr. Gambatista had his hand up. Tony. Hey, good evening, folks. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be there in person. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so um, I, I can fully sympathize and understand uh, both sides of, of where the voters are coming from and, and the, 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 the folks in the audience. Uh, it seems to me in a reval year that the tough part is, um, you know, when I, when I look on the real estate sector, I see constantly move into Killingly, move over the line from Rhode Island, uh, Massachusetts, because the tax burden is less. And to our taxpayers, that, that, that doesn't mean a lot. It means that you have an asset that's worth a lot more, but you, you're, not, you're not selling it. So it's, it's painful and, and it's, 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 not, it's not easy, especially for our older folks that are on a fixed income. And that's, that's totally understandable. But when you, you're going after services, and education, uh, th those to me are, are investments. They're investments that you, you can't take back. When we're using money out of the general fund that can put us in a bad position financially moving forward and have a long lasting effect, uh, I think we have to think of those very carefully. And the one thing I would say that uh, I, I would urge and I reiterate what Mr. LaBelle said and Mr. Ferrin is I truly believe we're in this position because of the number of people that came out in our town and voice what their belief was. And we're all elected by our constituents, but in my district, is I believe around 3,300 people, and, and I had about three of 350 votes. And those people voted for me, but they're only one-tenth of, of the voice of the town. And the, at the time, at the annual meeting, people did stand up and they spoke about the reval and uh, I don't know that there's a perfect way to do it, but I do know that if you've been around the last five years, you, you see what homes are selling for, and it's because we're desirable. When you go to the east and west of us, we're, we're growing at an accelerated rate, and uh, I, that makes it tough on folks. But m my real point is, is there's a term that can be looked at with endearment or very negatively, and it's that silence is acceptance. And for the folks in the audience uh, that are looking at these programs and possibly being cut, uh, I think a lot of people looked at the reval and people certainly went and wanted to have it modified and they, you know, they, they make their motions to have it looked at and changed. But I think a lot of people realized that this is where they were and not that they want to accept it, but they realized that their home is worth a lot more and their taxes are going to go up even though it's painful. But when you don't come out and voice that uh, you're in favor of the budget and it doesn't pass, we're in a, a real difficult position. Um, I'll leave it with, for me, the only vote for me is uh, number one, which was a mill rate of 20.33, but that would have to come with also uh, not even 50, I would like zero of the 250,000 taken from the education budget. Um, and uh, that's my stance for the evening. And thank you for your time. Thank you. So, so historically, um, with low voter turnout that would turn down budgets in the past. Um, the council has, has the option of not making massive cuts. Um, I, I, I totally agree with Mr. Gambatista. I think, you know, I, I have a hard time even contemplating some of these um, cuts just because six percent is not the voice of the town um that's that's that that would be it, it's not even even though we're not a, re, a democracy we're a republic i mean it's not even close to the majority vote i mean it's it's just not um my biggest concern is take is taking so much out of fund balance because in six months we all know what's happening in six months there is a national election, and that could have great impacts on the national economy, which will impact the state economy, which will eventually impact all of us. Um, I, I, kind of, I like um, the third one, just because it takes less out of fund balance. I think um, Ms. Florio also pointed out very, you know, there was a lot of comments at the, the annual town meeting about using fund balance. I think half a million is, is, a, is a good number to start with. 
Um, I, I cringe at cutting the um, Board of Ed the, another quarter million um, just because they they did such they did they did without too much I mean they didn't I mean I've I've sat through a lot of budgets and I've seen some Board of Eds get really really grumbly about us having us expecting them to cut lots and lots of money and and they made it work and and they were okay with it maybe not super okay with it but they were okay with it so I mean I'm looking at the number three we're taking half a million for fund balance we're saving almost a quarter of a million dollars because of our bonding we have extra income because the state is finally sending the money for for our, our capital projects. I mean that's I mean that that right there, those those right alone I mean are a million dollars. Um, I don't agree with Mr. Whitehead that there's nothing coming out of the town side. I think there is a lot coming. Out. The town was already at negative four. Um, I don't really feel comfortable cutting the board of ed a whole heck of a lot. Um, just because they've already they've already we've already cut them ha half of what they asked for um maybe middle ground i know mr grandelski had fifty thousand and mr gambatista was zero maybe a hundred um i think a hundred thousand might be somewheres you know where everybody everybody's kicked in a little bit we've made changes on both sides um we are lowering the spending and it's not you know we're not gonna we won't hopefully by the looks of this we won't lose positions i think i think i'm pretty sure if I, we looked at the board of ed and 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 because municipal budgets are not like our personal budgets or our business budgets there there has to be, there's always got to be a, there's always a caution so I think 100 would be somewhere in between the zero and the 250. So that's just, that's just my own port personal. I just don't want to raid both budgets for 6% of the vote. That, I don't think that's fair. In regards to the number of voters, this is the typical number that we get. We always have a poor voter turnout. So we need to stand by the people who said that we need to decrease our expenditures. Additionally, um, I did talk to Ms. Gloria. I wanted some more information. We do have a thing. It's called special reserves. Um, basically, as certain departments, when there's money that isn't expended by the end of the year, rather than going into the general fund it gets put in the special reserve some of those are winter, winter maintenance the constabulary reval maintenance for dams uh, bridge repair forest management um, stuff along those lines uh, inf information technology so each year at the end of the once the audit has been finalized um, after the audit's finalized then the board the Town Council um, can take some of that money that's left and from that year that have been closed out. I'll give you an example. Last fall, the Town Council deposited, I believe it was 142000 into uh, the constabulary reserve. That was money that was unexpended that was in the budget, um, mainly due to positions not getting filled that were budgeted. Um, there was already 160000 in that budget, which um at this point right now uh as of uh the beginning balance of the 22 23 budget year because that's the last year that was closed out um there was four hundred nine thousand dollars in the constabulary reserve um ms calorio indicated that this current fiscal year that we're in now that runs from 20 uh july 1st of 23 to uh June 30th of 24, so the budget year we're currently in, not the one we're um, deliberating on, that estimated expenditures are 143,000, which would bring the balance down to 265. Um, also, and Ms. Clorio, correct me if I'm wrong on this, looking at my numbers, the, uh, the that balance, the 409,000, includes the 83,000 from the audit that just got finalized. 
Uh, but so those haven't been deposited yet because it hasn't come before the council. So um, that's not quite quite accurate. So at the end of every fiscal year in usually September, we do a final closure of the books um, in preparation for the audit. The only two um, reserves that are have potential. Uh, there's actually three reserve accounts that potentially become before the council for consideration, and that is usually any remaining funds and constabulary, and that constabulary reserve was created and has been continually funded only because of the uncertainty in the development of that constabulary, and also more recently with the impacts of the police accountability bill and the additional costs around that program. Um, winter maintenance is also another one, the, high, the uh, storm maintenance. Um, reserve um, and that is to be able to be responsive to um, bad um, bad winters or high heavy storm events and damage uh, that we have to respond to so those two are done in that final closeout in September um, we the other ones that you listed the revaluation dam maintenance bridge maintenance forest management negotiation of pilot, demolition and relocation and info technology. Those are all actually funded by an amount in the actual budget. So there's no usual transfers to that at the end of the year. Um, and so I did provide the balances of all of those. So you can see what the, you know, even with the upcoming proposed um, funding would be, what that would be, what that balance would be. Um, with constabulary, we have been utilizing that reserve fund to purchase the new vehicles um, as we hire a newest new constable so that way we're not having to increase the mill rate for the purchase of a, of a vehicle rather utilizing that reserve and also we've been utilizing that reserve for the cost for the data storage around the body cameras and dash cams because we really didn't have an understanding of what that actually was going to cost. Um, we, you know, that's a very new program um, and we are required to have that. So we have been working through what those, um, what those costs are. So those are being borne by the reserve. Um, so that way we, as we get a final, you know, as we can trend what the actual costs are gonna be, that would have to transition into the operating budget because those are operating expenditures. You. Um, you would want to transfer those over into the operating budget. Um, so we did list, I did list out the history of expenditures on each of these funds for the last uh, five years. Um, <clears throat> and as you can see in some of these, like revaluation, we just went through revaluation, that fund balance at the end of this current fiscal year is estimated to be zero. Um, we would be, what well, our our process moving forward because we we do we are required to do revaluation every five years. Um, we take the estimated cost of revaluation and divide it by five, and put money into the reserve. So that way, in five years, when we have to do the revaluation, we're not having to increase the budget in one given year by a substantial amount. Um, dam and bridge maintenance is really exactly what they're for. Those have relatively low numbers actually for bridge maintenance we've had to go to we did have a bridge that needed repair we actually had to use town aid road funding for that because there's not enough money in that reserve to uh, really do any substantial uh, bridge maintenance um, forest management that is a newly established fund um, that was established just this current fiscal year um, we had a minor amount in a in a former fund that was applicable to this so we transferred it over um, but we're getting ready to start looking at expenditures from that in order to manage the chase reservoir um, property because um, there is a significant amount of dead um, and hazardous trees on that property uh, negotiation of pilot this is really around the negotiation of the lake we're generating pilot agreement we're actively in negotiation as you can see at the end of the current fiscal year we expect to be a zero the, current, the budget that you have before you pr uh, proposes another 40000 um, And I don't know that we will be wrapping up before the end of this fiscal year for that negotiation. Uh, demolition and relocation, these are properties. This is when the town has to go in and demolish a property um, for public safety purposes. Um, and right now, uh, we're estimating that that to have a tw uh, just under a uh, a $26,000 
balance that balance um, the average demolition for a, a residential home is av- is typically the size that we're having to deal with is usually somewhere between seventy five and one hundred thousand dollars for demolition so at this point we wouldn't have enough in reserves to manage a situation like that we would come to the council for additional funding um, information technology that account funds not just our hardware replacements we have a three-year um, replacement cycle for all of our hardware for cybersecurity purposes and just network integrity um, it funds not just that and as you're seeing we're averaging um, a little over 70,000 um, on that we have uh, annually we generally fund 50,000 out of the operating budget into this reserve to manage those as well as this accumulates funds in order to be able to pay for any software implementation such as the new website development we will be paying for the initial implementation of that from this reserve and that way we're not having to also um, build into a singular budget year a substantial outlay for a software um, upgrade one of the more recent upgrades that we did on software was with the finance department um, finance software um, for municipalities averages anywhere between one hundred and twenty five thousand to two hundred thousand dollars to replace that software package so some of these pra- packages for implementation can be uh, quite expensive so um, that's what that information technology line is for um, the constabulary at two hundred and sixty five thousand they're still you know we're still working out the unknowns on our uh, data storage and also freedom of information potential freedom of information requests and what exposure the town would have for legal review on those those would potentially come out of the reserve um, in order to manage what that is rather than hitting the initial budget so that way we would be able to get a better trend on that to be able to um, know what we have to ask for in an operating budget thank you I can go Jason you want to go no, uh, I, just, I was just gonna follow up real quick yeah yes um, please so the numbers you gave us the four hundred nine thousand two hundred fifty eight dollars um, you ex- estimated the expenditures for the current fiscal year at one hundred forty three thousand which would leave two hundred sixty five thousand five hundred fifteen in the constabulary reserve right that doesn't assume and that assumes no add to the constabulary reserve for the end of this fiscal year for the end of the fiscal year we're in right now currently okay. um, but that does include the yes. it includes yes. yes yep Sorry. includes all of that okay. and then on the info technology this year's budget has an additional 50,000 that would go into it um, which would bring the ending balance at 313 that incorporates that oh that that's where that revenue line is that's what that revenue is okay it incorporates that okay so looking at the expenditure history especially on the info technology line going back and I do understand that there are going to be additional costs but we went the one year that jumped up was 2020 I'm assuming that was because of COVID largely yes okay and in other years 2019 was 29,000 2020 as I said 2020 jumped to 74 then 2021 was 22 20 2022 was 29,000 2023 was 22,000 um, the current fiscal year um, uh, you're expected to expend 69,000 um, we've had some additional costs related to cybersecurity and um, uh, hardware replacement this year um, in the years of uh, 21 and 22 and even moving into 23 a little bit we had some challenges around uh, doing full replacements of our at our three-year cycle for hardware simply for being able to get uh, the um, product in um, in time in timing so we're back on our normal three-year re- uh, cycle for replacement which is uh, closer to uh, 
Right now, we're averaging about 35000 annually for hardware replacement. Um, one thing I, I look at it is the fact that the most we spent in any year was during 2020, and we spent 74000 and we're sitting on um, 263000 and that includes adding the current budget having an additional $51,800 added in. Um, I mean, I'll ask for your input, Ms. Calori, on what impact you think it would have potentially um, on the town side, but I'd be in favor of scaling back that $51,800, um, scale back 50000 out of that, because that would still put us um, at or excuse me, uh, $212,000 in the uh, IT special reserve account, and the biggest expenditure we've had was seventy-four thousand. So, your I just want to make sure I understand um, your your proposal is to remove the full fifty thousand of the um, annual contribution to the information into the reserve for information technology from the proposed budget. Uh, yet the because that's what you ha that's yep. what we have in there is the yep. fifty one thousand and uh, fifty one thousand eight hundred fifty thousand is what's in the proposed budget. Okay, the special reserve information that you uh, emailed me today said fifty one thousand. That's for the current year. Okay. We have fifty thousand right. in next year's budget. Okay. All right. So that's your proposal is to zero that out. Yeah. So um, you know, the council can decide to do whatever you choose to do with this. Um, you know, we have a minimum of 35000 on an annual basis that's going out of that reserve for our hardware. Um, I would strongly encourage that if that is an avenue or a direction that you decide to take, that you recognize that that needs to be built back in into a subsequent budget. Otherwise, you're simply decimating your reserve. And we have ongoing operational expenditures that are paid for out of that to help smooth in impacts of infrastructure to the mill rate. So again, you, if you choose to take that out, that is the decision of the council. I would just advocate that, that you do that with the contemplation or consideration of having to add that back in in a subsequent budget in order to be able to meet those demands um, of our infrastructure. I'll ask for input from everyone how you, how you would feel about cutting that 50000 out. I think it's a good idea. I'm not sure. So we also have um, a number of upgrades that we're going to be doing in the booth in order to be able to better stream and publish our meetings here. Um, part of that is grant funded. Part of that is going to be funded out of the reserve. So... Um, that is a project, that's a capital project that we would fund out of this reserve in the upcoming year. That's how much? Probably like 20,000 that we would be asking for. So we would be utilizing 20,000 out of the reserve for that, plus 35,000 for um, fund uh, for hardware, um, and then our um, any software upgrade that we have to do. So just I just telling you that and only to better understand that there's more than just the hardware expense. Again, you can choose to take out the fifty thousand, but it's it is going to, you know, we potentially run into the concern in a subsequent year. With regard to the uh, technology, um, I was in at Tuesday's town council meeting and I caught the very end of it. Wednesday I caught a portion of the board of ed meeting. Board of Ed meeting was nice. You could see who the people were. And I agree with that, but I can't, I can't go 
I look at the fact that there's 263,000 in there and why wasn't that used previously to do that? Um, and as Ms. Colorio said, it would be roughly 20,000 for the upgrade in the booth. And what would the balance be? With the, the 35,000 she mentioned and the 20,000, if we reduced the $50,000 contribution from the current year, that would bring us down to uh, 160, Seven thousand dollars in the reserve after the twenty thousand and the thirty-five thousand that they spoke about, and the biggest expenditure, like I said, over the past five years was seventy-four thousand dollars. So even if you double that seventy-four thousand dollars, we'd have enough to cover in reserve. I just have an issue seeing all the money sitting in these funds that isn't being yeah, used right. year after year after year, and, and it's that's taxpayer money just sitting there. And why are we considering cutting ta cutting people's positions when we have money sitting in accounts that we can use that's taxpayers' money just sitting there? The reason why we have our credit rating is because there's money sitting in those savings accounts. So the IT reserve has been utilized, had, was formulated to manage infra hardware, specifically hardware costs, and to fund initial software outlay costs. That was the parameters around the, the IT reserve. Um, and so there are time periods in which that fund has grown over time because we are preparing potentially for software um, modifications or substantial hardware investments. Um, we have minimized some of that hardware in moving almost all of our servers to hosted servers, so we're no longer replacing physical hardware servers in the, in the town hall, which actually worked out well when we had our flood. We were only replacing network switches um, as opposed to losing potential data. But um, so that was the parameters set around that. I will say, uh, Tammy, to your point, you know, one of the conversations that we have with our credit rating agency is they do look at our reserve funds and our consistent, um, our consistent uh, funding of those and the consistent look to that long-term utilization. Um, and that is one of the benefits as to why we are in that double A plus category is because Killingly, this council, councils before have been dedicated to the long-term view on the utilization and the funding at small incremental levels um, of those reserves in order to be able to manage larger investments that don't end up having jumping your mill rate or having substantial swings. Um, it makes it far more, far easier to be able to implement those uh, capital investments in uh, appropriate timing. So that's, that is a, you know, we have that conversation with our credit rating agency pretty much every time that we have a credit rating call. And that is one of the benefits that they have discussed. I completely understand there's 263,000 in there. So I say if the council chooses to um, make a reduction there, um, I would just advocate that if you make that reduction this year, that you do so with the knowledge and 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 forethought that that is going to eventually need to go back in to a res into the reserve, um, or that number is going to have to be adjusted in a subsequent year. So again, you're 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 reducing for this year, but you're going to face potentially an increase in a subsequent year. Just like using fund balance, it's the same concept. Mr. Chair, I think I agree. If we do it at a one shot deal, not put it in once, and then you know the because the turmoil with the reval is just how, how do we get out of that? I, and I see where you're going with that, but I'm, I'm seeing the other part too, but maybe, and we can't go into it again, we can't do the same thing next year. It's, it's a one, a one-time deal. And, and then, so we can. 
And Ed, I will say to your point, because I know that you are very focused on our credit rating and the impacts that use of fund balance might be, because you were here when we did get dinged um, for uh, utilization of our fund balance, as well as Tammy. So, um, yeah, but we did that during the middle of the year. We so. did, we did. So, but right, even right. doing it, even using your fund balance for operational expenses on an ongoing basis is looked at poorly by our credit rating agencies because just as we would all as all of us if we were going for a loan and you told the loan officer that you're going to be using your savings account only to pay for that debt um, they're going to say well eventually your savings account runs out and what then right um, so but with this with revaluation and having the impact that it has that's a conversation we can have with the credit rating agency right, that's right, and right. be able to articulate that the council is pl it has plans to reduce that reliance over a mm -hmm. period of time to be able to smoothen that impact. That is, you know, they usually don't necessarily have a huge concern when we have an articulable plan around coming off of the utilization that for operating costs. So, you know, I think at the activation of fund balance is something that, you know, we could probably readily explain with our credit rating agencies and not suffer a detriment, provided that plan is followed through in yeah. subsequent years. Well, see, the last time we did the supplemental appropriation three years in a row, and it was a supplemental appropriation mid-year. So yeah, so I guess if we have a, a one-time, and that's that's it, it can only be a one-time. We, we can't make it a recurring thing, and then I, I think it's not as bad for you to tell the, the bond people like, okay, we we had an issue and we had to do something and fund balance was available and we could affect the mill rate a little bit with that. So, thank you. And and I will say that what I'm proposing isn't taking money out of that reserve. It's well, not well, depositing it's, another fifty thousand right, this yeah, current okay. year. And historically, the past three previous budgets, we've added fifty thousand a year. Which you look in three years, we've added 150,000 into it, and the balance is still 263,000. So you go back three years ago, and there was 113,000 in it, minimum, and that balance is carried forward on top of the 150 we've added in. So yeah. why not um, suspend yeah, for, for one this, year another right, 50,000 into it? Right. And then if it comes down to next year where we, we deplete it and it gets dropped down, it, our, our ending balance is 70000 80000 somewhere in there after all the expenditures, then we take that into consideration next year. And I, and I do understand kicking the can down the road creates a fiscal cliff, but looking at historical expenditures and, and the balance in this fund, um, my opinion is it, it can handle not having an additional 50000 put in this year. So I have a question. So what, Mary, what is set to go into the constabulary and winter maintenance for this year? Not taking anything out. What do those look like? Yeah, so right now we don't, I don't have anything projected going in. Um, I have to look at where we land. Uh, winter maintenance is probably really the one that's going to have the funding available or remaining okay. at the end of the current year yep. to potentially transfer over. Um, uh, constabulary, uh, there may be some, but we may not request okay. that to okay. move over at this point. Okay. So what if we took, as Jason said, um, out of the, the 50000 not going in, how impactful would it be if we took 50000 out of winter maintenance and constabulary plus that fifty that's going in and reduce the cut to okay. the Board of Ed to 125 So you would put, I, I just want to make sure I walk through this, that way we have it um, on our end. So what would that would look like is it... Be, so the IT reserve is funded as an expenditure line in the budget. What we would do for constabulary and for winter maintenance is that we would actually transfer money in as revenue. So you okay. wouldn't be cutting either of those expenditure lines. You would be increasing revenue from other funds. Um, and it would lower mill rate. It would still that, achieve the, the, the value so. of lowering mill, mill rate, but just know that it doesn't actually reduce the expenditure line you would, incre you would increase your revenue to rec reflect the additional revenue from those other reserve funds in order to offset um, the budgeted cost. So would that, so if we cut 
the Board of Ed 125 instead of 250, would that keep our mill rate around the 20.33 with those three moves on the reserves? So I want to make sure I have it all in my head. Okay. Um, we've talked, we've thrown out a lot of numbers. Sorry. So taking, uh, which <laughs> scenario are you working from? Scenario one or Scenario three? one. Scenario one. Okay. We get to scenario one. I'm just curious. And you're looking at having a there. Board of Education cut of 125? Okay. And a $50,000 cut from the IT reserve? And then 50000 from each the winter maintenance and? Yes. So, so it's kind of across the board. Um, it, you're actually cutting a little bit more than the 250. Um, so it would be close to the 220.33 would be just a hair under okay. that because it's about 25,000 more than the 250 if I've right. got if I've okay. calculated that right. I would support that. What is the projected surplus for the constabulary because we haven't onboarded the ninth officer? I don't have that um, right off the top of my head. We did have some additional costs related to their um, uh, 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 accountability, um, the accountability bill and some of the training, but I don't have that number right in front of me, and I don't want to just rattle off something I don't know. I don't know, and I wasn't, I wasn't prepared to calculate that. Can I ask Dr. Nash a question? Is that... Do I have to, do you have to? Rules have already They're been already suspended. suspended. So can I ask Dr. Dr. Nash question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No. Oh, I have up the mic. Hello. Thank you for I, all the hard I work you do. And we're we really do the sorry we're in this position. Yeah. I know it hurts you guys. Down. It hurts all of us. Of course. Um, yes, for this. Would a $125,000 cut, would that impact employees? So I haven't shared my plans in terms of potential cuts with the Board of Education, so I hate to say that publicly, oh, okay. right? right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow I have, I have bands of potential cuts that could happen tonight, but I, I don't want to share those without sharing that with the Board. Understood. Okay. Did Thanks. you fill those two? positions for the SEL paras the SEL para the two new positions that were created yeah so one only only one went through um, in terms of decision packages and that position is already filled has been filled I should say yeah. thank you I can go. So uh, I also like number four. Uh, I think job cuts are part of a business. I don't understand the thing we can never cut. I've been cut myself several times. Uh, I worked construction at the end of each job. I would get my pink slip, and then I would get another job. So uh, I'm not saying I'm in favor of these. I, I don't particularly like these, but just the emphasis that that never happens is not real life in a business people get cut um, I'm against the library cut I'm against the highway cut and the recreation cut but uh, I had suggested ten thousand dollars off of parks and recreation before I would like to see that I like Jason's idea with the reserve credit in terms of the school I'm for either two hundred and fifty thousand dollar cut or a five hundred thousand dollar cut and in uh, return would be in support of replenishing the non-lapsing fund to two million dollars um, I personally would like to see what the budget would look like without law enforcement um, I'm like sorry without the entire law enforcement division no so what does that, that would mean? be great cuts no I'm just asking being very good you said they, without law enforcement so I want to know what is <laughs> that the mean? ninth the three quarters of the ninth officer this okay. year or whatever um, I'd like to see, I've, I've kind of shifted on Ula's ambulance cut. She had asked for $15,000 more, and I had been swayed uh, because it is a, a large responsibility to cut an ambulance service. But then her going over the budget with me again, it really looks like uh, kind of larger numbers than necessary. So I would be in favor of seeing that again. Um, I don't know. That's that's what I've got for now. 
But anyways, that, that, that would be my preference. So I would like to respond. I understand in the real world, and we all live in the real world, that job cuts are a potential, but I don't consider job cuts a potential when there are other places to pull that money from beyond cutting a job. Well understood. I, I think both. I would like to see all of those cuts, Patty, but I hear what you're saying. Thank you. I agree with Michelle on um, the cut to the ambulance. I asked twice for the non-salaried expenditures and I never got those. And their ask was um, 60000 and that we were o it was only reduced by five. So I'm looking for additional fifteen to twenty five thousand from the ambulance. Thank you. I do want to add um, one thing, uh, as Michelle Murphy had mentioned, I am with the fact that the budget failed and we're, we're looking at making further cut um, to the Board of Ed side. Um, I feel with, with any substantial cut to the Board of Ed side, I would also be in favor of increasing um, the transfer into the non-lapsing account up from the 175 uh, or $1.75 million up to, to cap it off at the $2 million, which would be um, $250,000 more going back to the Board of Ed into the non-lapsing account. And the advantage of doing it that way, um, that's another $250,000 they could use in the current year if needed, um, and it would have no impact on the minimum budget requirement, the MBR, um, for this current year. So, so that would be a potential way to um, help smooth over any additional cuts to the BOE. Mr. Anderson, I would be in favor of the non-lapsing account to two two million to, to the cap. That was voted on and approved several years ago. Um, with the fact they're returning, supposedly returning very little to bring it just back to the two million now, that means next year with the cuts they have, they may have very little to nothing to add into that non-lapsing account next year. Thank you. And. One thing I just want to want to bring up um, to any members of the public who are unaware of, uh, going through the BOE's budget process this year, one thing they did do is they recognized surplus that they had for the current year, and they are planning on pre-purchasing what they can uh, for next year. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Nash, but that was somewhere in the area of seven hundred thousand dollars. Which, if it wasn't for that the increase that failed of 703000 on top of that 700000 would have been a $1.4 million increase on the Board of Ed side if they weren't using the surplus to pre-purchase. Mr. Gambatista, you've been quiet for a while. Would you like to add <laughs> anything else? Um, no, uh, I'm just... Um, I'm just listening. I I, um, I agree with Tammy. I, I like number three um, at 20.47, but with only a 125 uh, to the Board of Ed. Um, I understand all, all the concerns. I, I don't think it's e easy either way. Um, uh, I I think the, the you know I think we're here like I said because of the reval. I, 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 it's understandable. Um, you know, I, I don't know that we have control over it. I think in five years, our homes are going to be worth a lot more, and we're going to be in the position again, and uh, that's where we're going to be. Um, and uh, I, I agree with Ula. She is absolutely correct that, uh, you know, this is the way it's done. It's done by vote, and, and it's small. Um, but I don't think that that's the voice of our people, and I think um, we probably just have to do a better job, myself included, of of what we want um, from, as a town, we have to get out and vote for and get behind. Um, it, it would be nice to really know what, ev what everybody really thought instead of uh, 500 people. 
I think that's very, very small. And I, I am, but I, at the same time, you have to honor it. it it's, it's, it's the way we do it. It's, um, you know, it's the way, it's, it's the rules we have to follow. Uh, but I just look at these as investments I'm willing to make. I don't look at them as burdens. Uh, that, that may be a selfish view, but um, putting these services from the, the Parks and Rec, the library, um, the ambulance, um, I, I just, uh, I, I can't, I can't go along with those. If I. Thank you. Nice way, Phil. So, so kind of, I, I think we're almost wrapping. We almost kind of almost have a consensus. If, if we had this scenario number three with the bond savings, 125 for the Board of Ed, that 150 that we were taking out of the res, um, deposits for the special reserves, plus the 500 for fund balance and the 250 extra in income, where would that... We're doing the recalculation yeah, right now because we're, I had just done it on scenario one. And oh, that's what I was going to tell you. So well, let me do scenario three with the 250. We're almost there. Sorry, so fund balance. So I still, I still just want to keep nope. reiterating. I so really I, I hate to take a whole yeah. lot of extra out of fund balance just because we don't know what's going to happen in six months either. So for, to answer on scenario one, using scenario one, that produced a mill rate of 20.18. Using the scenario three, with the only change being fund balance and using the same uh, 125 for the Board of Education, reducing the IT reserve by the 50,000, um, and activating another 100,000 in revenue from those two reserve funds, that produces a mill rate of 20.32, right? Um, so, um, you know, clearly the difference is the $250,000 in use of fund balance. Um, and so one goes from the 20.32 to the 20.18. Um, I can, if I have an understanding of which direction the consensus might be, then we can give you the numbers to fill into your. Mary, what do we have in fund balance right now? So fund balance, uh, right now, we are um, estimating at the end of fiscal year 23-20, well, so at the audited number, we are just under 17 million. We are at 16,951,000. ,000. That's the audited number from last fiscal year. The current fiscal year, we are anticipating um, that number to increase slightly to just over 17,000 at 17,004. And then we have the million, projected 17,000, yeah, 17 million, sorry. 17,400,000 um, or 25.6%. And then the utilization of fund balance, 2 million, that's already currently proposed for capital projects. And then the additional 750,000 for uh, operating expenses would bring the fund balance down to 14.7 million or 21.3 percent i did you know i do you guys should all have at your tables a long sheet like this um that has the fund balance production projection on it i did roll that again one more year to see what it would mean to because i don't know that the council or the townspeople would have pallet to remove a full seven hundred fifty thousand dollars out of revenue in one year that's a lot um, of a hit all in one year, given that there's likely also impacts to that budget. So stepping that in over a two year period, dropping it down to a 400,000 utilization in fiscal year 26, that would bring, again, this is assuming that there's no turn backs into fund balance. Um, uh, 12.3 million would be the fund balance, uh, still holding that same capital investment for roads. Or, and bringing it down to 17.8. And then the final year when you step off completely from utilizing it for operations and only using it for capital will bring it down to 10.3. Again, that's assuming absolutely no turn back. Um, it's you know, highly probable there, there's likely there would be a turn back, although we're expecting it to be minimal because 
with the Board of Ed having theirs fulfilled. Um, and on the town side, we're not expecting um, significant returns. But are you taking into account, like you're looking at fully, fully putting the money back in the non-lapsing account? Correct, that's what I'm assuming here. Okay. That's, right. that's what I'm assuming here. And I'm assuming in those outer years that the return or the remaining unspent funds from the Board of Education would be enough to refill that non-lapsing account each year. And so therefore, um, there would be negligible amount going to fund balance. That's what that projection. So this is kind of worst case scenario. That's what we're um, showing here as a projection. Um, so that way you have that information. So again, you know, you could we could articulate that through the you know the with our credit rating um, agencies because we will be going out for borrowing again next year as it had been planned with Westfield because of the Westfield project. Um, we will be doing another debt issuance next year. Um, so we will be going through that process again and having to, you know, uh, issue debt again. Um, but having that conversation around the impacts of revaluation and smoothing in that impact on to our residentials, um, that's a conversation to be had. And, you know, as long as we can articulate that the council um, has a protected uh, plan to step off of that, um, you know, that's an important thing. So... I will say the 500,000 definitely, uh, you know, <coughs> you would step down, the step down in the subsequent year, you would end up in the fiscal year 26, 27, being over the 16% versus being under, um, which is our bottom line of our proposal. But again, that's the projection, right? Things can change over that time period and the council could decide to, to take a different stance on, on other components. So. So at the number one, the mill rate, if, it, if we kept it at the 750 with the proposal, we'd still be at a 21.3%. We'd be at 20.18 mills. No, no, not okay. the mills, but for the, um, for the general fund, the percent would be even after, if we kept the 750, kept the whole scenario, oh. we'd be at a 20.18 mill rate. Mm -hmm. But our utilization would still be, it would be 21.3 years. Correct, said? correct. And, and where is our range they want us? At? We want to be within um, between 16 and 25%. So that's, that's what our guide is. So we're right age. in the middle. Yep. Okay. That's yep. the one I like. And if, um, if, that, if that's good with everybody else, I'm, I'm comfortable going with that one too. Oh, and I forgot. So, and I would support the two million cap being re, um, being funded um, because then any impact the Board of Ed would have, they can potentially use that non-lapsing to offset it. Do you, and is that with no additional cut, just the two to increasing the non-lapsing to two fifty, and then no additional cut to the B? I I mean two million, but the two hundred and fifty thousand. So I said. So I had said instead of two, so scenario one with what Mary just explained, <coughs> instead of a two fifty cut one twenty five, and then the one and then and the one fifty from the reserve. Yes, yes, correct. And that would have us to the twenty point one eight, and then potentially they could use anything, any potential damage to their budget. Okay, sorry. Could be offset with the non lap thing if we fund it to the two million. If I understand that correctly, do you, yeah. do you need that in motion? Well, one thing I I, I will get you the numbers for that. Okay. So you uh, could. I I do want to comment on one other thing. Um, as, as I said, I would be in favor of uh, bringing the deposit into the non-lapsing account up to the cap of two million dollars if the board of ed was taking another substantial cut. If we're only cutting one hundred and twenty-five thousand out of the board of ed, I would only be in favor of increasing the deposit into the non-lapsing account that same amount of 125,000 um, and at that point the additional 125,000 which is already in a general fund would stay in a general fund and could be put towards um, uh, operating costs on the town side point, to bring the mill rate down point point of order on that that's a discussion for the june 4th meeting i believe no it's already been discussed multiple times during this meeting well it shouldn't have been I'm, I, I'm with uh, Tammy and uh, Patty on number one. Um, 
Can we make a motion on it? So just so you have the numbers um, on the town's budget, that would result in a town budget of $23 million nine hundred and eighteen thousand two hundred and forty six dollars and a board of education budget of forty seven million one hundred and thirty three thousand eight hundred and thirty nine dollars for a total of seventy one million fifty two thousand eighty five dollars anybody need me to repeat any of those numbers May I please have the, the, the first one again, please? The first one, the town, the town one is twenty three million nine hundred and eighteen thousand two hundred and forty six dollars. I'd like to just say I'm with Jason with the uh, the non lapsing account because if you're going to have two million dollars as a buffer, you give him back uh, seven hundred thousand in pre buys this year and possibly. Mm -hmm. Possibly filling the non-lapsing account, account with another 250,000, plus the fact that we use the opera funds of uh, 900,000 to uh, potentially fill jobs. That you know, basically, you're taking money, and you're you're <clears throat> it's a, not a reoccurring money. So now it's going to have to come out of the taxpayers directly for the town. I'm 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 with you, Jay. If they're gonna, I think it should be a should be the cut we originally talked about. Thank you. I will throw one other cut out there. I know this hasn't been discussed at all tonight. Um, I know it's been brought up to me um, by several council members um, outside of this um, individually, and that cut would be to cut $92,920 off line item 50 120 so 50120 and any subsequent benefit amounts that would go along with that cut which department are you looking at planning and development on page d10 and you're looking to cut you're cu cutting which line salary administrative so you're looking to remove the department head? Are you serious? That was brought up to me by several people. And the question, I was also asked if it was something that could be done. So I did reach out to the town attorney and find out statutorily if that was something we could or couldn't do. And the town attorney did inform me that there is no state statute that requires that position. That's correct. I'm not in favor of that. No. Nope. Mr. Mr. Chair, no. I'd like to make the motion to um, to put on the motion for the, the numbers that were just put given to us, and I'd like a vote, a roll, a voice vote. I mean, a, I mean a roll call vote. But sorry. Just we have discussion. Uh, well, at this point, we got a motion. Question. Mm -hmm. Question. And Tony seconded it. Do we have so. discussion? So I want to make sure that I have the correct motion. So the motion on the floor is to approve the town's budget at the 23.9 million that was articulated mm -hmm. and the Board of Education budget at the 47.1 million that was articulated for a total combined budget of just over 70 million. Is that correct that I have that motion on the floor and that was made by Tammy and seconded, seconded by, by Mr. Gambatista. Okay. Just over 71 million. 71, yeah. sorry. 71 million, 52,000. That number wasn't up in front of me. 71,05. That's right. Sorry. No. Good. And what would that equal for a mill rate? Is that, that the 20.18? 20.18. 20. Yep. And what was the cut to the BOE? 125,000. Let us know in this discussion, Jason, with well, the motion on the floor. Once, once the motion is on the floor to move the question, um, at that point we go to a vote and it'd be a When's the discussion? Vote. Now? Yeah, it was moved to a vote, so the discussion. No discussion. Yep, so be, I'd want to say that I support the $92,000 cut of planning and development, and I wish we got to discuss that. I agree. 
I think the uh, the future of the town is at hand. I think uh, from what I ha hear from people in planning and zoning that uh, we want to increase density in the town. Do we want that? No. No. I agree also. I think the vision needs to be for the town. So at this point, we have a motion and a second to move the question. And a request for a roll call vote. So are we voting to move the question or are we voting on the no the question? We're voting on moving the question. And Ms. Corey, are you going to do the roll call, or would you like me to? I can do the roll call. I'm sorry. One more time, Jason. We, uh, we are voting on moving the question. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Ed Grandowski? Yes. Uh, Andy Whitehead? No. Michelle Murphy? No. Tony Gamb Gambatista? Yes. Kevin Cortula? Yes. Uh, Tammy Wakefield? Yes. Uh, Jason Anderson? No. Patty George? Yes. Uh, Ula Teague Barclay? No. Motion passes 5 4. So at this point, now it will be a vote on the motion that's on the floor, which is for the town government budget. Actually, read the entire motion off at this point. So, this is for a revolu resolution approving the town of Killingly operating budget for fiscal year July 1st, 2024 to June 30th, 2025. And be it resolved by the town council of the town of Killingly that an Accordance with Section 1005 of the Town Charter, the budget for the Town of Killingly, Connecticut for the fiscal year July 1, 2024 to June 30, 2025, in the amount of $23,918,246 allocated to general government and $47,133,839 allocated to education for a total combined budget of $71,052,085 is approved and shall be filed with the town clerk for submission to the annual town meeting for its adoption. Ms. Gloria, if you could do a roll call vote, please. Ula Teague Barclay? No. Ed Gwendowski? Yes. Patty George? Yes. Tony Gambatista? Yes. Jason Anderson? No. Andy Whitehead? No. Tammy Wakefield? Yes. Michelle Murphy? No. Kevin Curtula? Yes. The motion passes 5-4. At this time, we'll move on in the agenda. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion made, been made by Mr. Grandelsky, seconded by Mr. Curtula. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? This meeting is adjourned.